right, so, uh, man, what's up, guys? This is so fun. Um, you, uh, you guys on Friday, I had so much fun last Friday doing the uh, live thing and answering so many questions. Uh, I think we're going to do that again soon because, man, I had such a good time uh, chatting with you guys and um, kind of saying hello to everyone on there. And, uh, yeah, I really want to do that again because that was so great. Uh, it's just re uh, really fun for me to just flip it on and just see who's out there. I don't know. I'm just, like, turning it on. So we did that on Friday, so uh, we'll probably do that this week. And I need to find a day, maybe Friday again. Uh, and I'll let you guys know um, leading up to it. That way you know you have a chance to log on for those of you that weren't able to get on live. Um, but I think it's still up on the YouTube page. So you can still reference the, um, the live chat we had. So that was really fun. Um, so today up here in the studio, I've got my matchless going and my Princeton going. And uh, the Princeton's a combo. So I'm micing up that with just one mic. And then I got the, the cab up here, 65 amps cab that I use. Instead of being down in the garage, I pulled it up in the studio, mic'd it up so it'd be up here. So it's not quite as loud as I would normally run it. I'm using the master uh, master volume on the matchless. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of do a stereo thing. And I don't know, if, you know, I'm not sure what that's gonna sound like yet on here. So, um, you know, maybe that's something we'll do uh, in the next episode. Um, but I just wanted to run, run you through a few quick ideas for how I run, um, how I run my setup uh, live. Someone had asked um, about what it would be like to kind of do like a top to bottom, kind of A to Z. Uh, what would you bring on a trip to a gig, to a conference, to a uh, concert, to, you know, whatever. Um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what would you bring with you? And uh, so, man, there's a few things that I like absolutely, you know, some of this may be, uh, you know, it may seem uh, elementary, or for some of you, you maybe have never packed to go play live somewhere. So we're just going to kind of cover all of it, and uh, and then uh, by all means, please comment below, and I'll I'll try to answer whatever questions we can. But uh, I wanted to quickly show you, like, you know, for starters, I, I kind of think of it from what I hold in my hand down through my signal chain, and that's kind of how I pack for like a trip or to go to church or you know whatever. So I'm like, okay, I need at least one guitar I can really trust, you know, something that will stay in tune, something that can kind of cover all the bases. For years I toured with a Les Paul and it did great. You know, I, I figured out how to make it work. You know, I, th I think a lot of times in a live setting, you, you'll make work whatever you have, you know, you'll make it work. Um, so if that's a Fender or, you know, Gibson, whatever. Uh, so a lot of times for me, that's a Tele. Uh, a lot of times for me, that's a, you know, something like a Les Paul. Uh, or my Fano is one that I take with me a lot that can kind of cover a lot of bass. It's, it's got P90 pickups, which is a, a great sound for like a uh, kind of a single coil thing, but still fat. Um, so I, I'll start with that. And I usually pack that in one of a couple different things. Show you what I use. Mono, double case. So if I'm going to church or even a uh, short trip on a bus or van or whatever, this is a double case. I can fit, I'll fit like one Les Paul and one Tele in here and I'm packed. Okay. Next thing is the pedal board that goes in one of these. They make soft cases for these, but I have just this thing. I fold it up, slides in here. I open it up, I pull it out. It's ready to go. And I try to make it as simple as possible so when I get to where I'm going, I don't want to be plugging in a bunch of, you know, like I want to pull it out and my guitar cable goes in and this cable goes to the amp and I'm done. That's the goal. Uh, you know, nobody wants to be sitting around at Soundcheck waiting on the guitar player to like plug in all this stuff, you know, or, you know, it's like you just want to like be ready. And I think that's a huge, huge part is just having your bases covered. You know, when you go to rehearsal or you go to, um, play at church or go on tour, you know, that's not really the time to be down there experimenting with all your different patches and stuff. It's like, you kind of want to do all the experimenting at home, hopefully. I mean, you still want to have fun, but like, you kind of want to have your stuff ready to go, you know? So you pull out your pedal board, it's wired up. Hopefully you've worked out all your bugs at home. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want any hissing and, and buzzing and cables that don't work and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, try to get all that stuff done at home. And, um, one little tip on that is a really great power supply. 
A lot of you guys have asked, how do I keep my no signal from being too noisy? How do I keep it from being too buzzy? What do I do to keep it from like being so loud? And I'll show you what I use. Um, the, uh, I don't know if the amps are gonna pop on me. I'll show you what I got under the hood. So underneath here, all wired up is my, um, it's called a CS12 made by True Tone. Look how clean that is. Thank you guys at XTS for wiring that up. I could never have done that. Some of that extra is uh, the, the not so clean parts are, are me, but the, uh, um, but the clean parts are XTS. Those guys are fantastic. So, um, sorry, I had one, one cable that was uh, one little thing I was experimenting with that's loose on the pedal board. But, what I'm saying is, it got a clean power supply. I know it's gonna be good. That's a great one, True Tone. Uh, all one word, T-R-U-E-T-O-N-E. -E. Uh, and CS12. Now you don't need, you may not need that many if you don't have a big, big pedal board. They make a smaller one. They also make the one spot, which is really popular. Um, but that's a great, clean, great power supply. And I've had very, very little issues uh, ever since having that. Um, so thanks to XTS for wiring that up and for True Tone for making the best power supply. It's just awesome. So, um, yeah, so that's one thing I really rely on when I go live. Because, you know, you go somewhere, you might end up with bad power or some weird stuff. Sometimes the lighting rigs that they fire up, you know, the lights will be back by my amps. And as soon as they turn the lights on, the amps go wild. And that stuff can really be uh, an, 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 an annoyance, you know, live. Um, so, yeah, so I do that. And then I have one pedal. Uh, so at, coming out of my pedal board, I have uh, my reverb pedal. So all, you can see I go mono in. Hey, there's the pedal board. I go mono in right here and I go stereo out to two amps, okay? Mono in, stereo out. Now you can do that at your delays too. Live right now I'm running um, mono into the reverb and stereo out to two amps. Now, if you're going to church, you may not need two amps. If there's another guitar player, maybe you have one amp and they have one amp. I like two amps if I'm the only guitar player or if I'm going out on tour or, or using rental gear, they're like, hey, what do you want for rental gear uh, and I'll, or backline gear and I'll pick two amps, you know? Uh, and so I go stereo to two amps. And the reason why, uh, you know, I like the sound of it because even if they're, even if they're not doing any cool stereo tricks, I like the way that an overdrive pedal or a boost pedal or a guitar sounds through two amps because they're gonna react slightly differently. You get this kind of broad spectrum of sound. And so I like that. I think that sounds good to me. And um, so, um, yeah, I'll set the amps kind of similar. I'm not ever doing like one's not really bassy and one's really treble. I don't really like that theory for me because I, you know, I don't want the guy, the guys at front of house or whoever your mixer is, your, um, uh, uh, you know, I just don't want that to be something that they have to be thinking about. You know, like I want to give them two amps that are really quality tone, good signal, and then they can do what they want out front, whether they pan them or put them off to one side or, you know, whatever. I don't want this side of the room to hear a really trebly amp and this side of the room to hear no treble and all bass. Like it doesn't make sense to me to do it that way. So I run them. I get as good a sound as I can get out of both amps because I think they, I want both amps to be doing what they do well. I want both amps to be really going, and then I just, you know, I send, uh, I send the front of house. When I say front of house, our, our sound engineer, I send them, uh, you know, uh, or whoever's running sound at church. Um, I send that, uh, you know, him or her. I send them a great amp sound with both amps, hopefully. Okay, so great guitar I can trust. Good cable. You want a good, great cable that you, you know, can really trust. A lot of times for me, that's uh, in the past, that's been like a Megami cable. Those are expensive, you don't have to do that. Lately, I'm using Planet Waves uh, Diodario. We've got a, um, like a partial uh, Diodario uh, discount there. So I get a lot of, uh, sometimes get cables from them. Um, and if, you, if you're making your own cables at home with your pedal board and you're having trouble, just ditch that and get buy some that you trust. It'd be better to have three guitar cables that you knew weren't gonna break that little patch cables that you knew were good cables on your pedal board and only have three or four pedals than to be making all your stuff and then you get there and you can't trust your signal at a, at a concert. Okay, so guitar I can trust, 
cable I can trust, pedal board with good power. At some point in my signal chain, I split to two amps, okay? You gotta think about the phasing thing. That's the only tricky part with that. This has a reverse phase on here. Uh, so I flip that switch back and forth, listening to the two amps until it sounds right to me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll fly or carry the pedal board case, the mono case. When I'm flying, I put the two guitars in a hard shell case that looks like that pedal board case. Uh, and they just lay in there so it's real solid if the uh, folks at the airlines decide not to be nice to my gear. Um, I also, uh, I really rely on these capos till I have one laying around. Let's see if I got one in this bag. Uh, I love these capos made by, um, Diodario Planet Waves. I have one in here. Here we go. Yeah. These. What I like about this, it's got a tension adjust you can adjust the tension on it so for an electric you know if you put like a a capo that's wound too tight on an electric you can it'll be in tune and then you put the capo on and it goes out of tune so what i like to do is um i like to adjust the tension um accordingly so i'll show you what i mean so let's say so still on I unplugged something somewhere. Somebody's not mad. Somebody's upset with me. Who is it? I think I plugged my pedal in backwards. <laughs> I was up here playing with my pedal. Uh, whoa, goodness. That was loud. It sounded like a helicopter going over my house. Okay, so uh, I somehow goofed up my signal here and it's not working. All right, so what I do is I'll tune open, right, without the capo on, and I'll set the, I'll adjust the capo, you know, like if you do it too loose, it might not fret. You know, get, it might be too buzzy. Now this is a really fat neck, so it's gonna cap, it's gonna, it's gonna press the capo down a little harder. If it's a skinnier neck, you may have to tighten it up. But what I do is I just make sure that it sounds fretted and I leave the, the attention there. Now, if it's way up here, you might have to loosen it a little bit. It's down here, I might have to tighten it up. But what I like is I like for it to just barely clamp down where it's not buzzing, but it is, you know, giving me a clear tone, right? And what I do there is if I tune open, and I have to quickly capo and go, we start a song, it should be pretty, in, you know, if you're intonated well, it should be pretty close to in tune. Because if you put the capo on and then tune, uh, really specific to the capo, which is what I do like in the studio or something, and then the next song comes and you gotta take the capo off and say the attention is too tight on here. Well, when you take the capo off, the whole thing's out of tune if you have to start the next song. So it's tricky. If uh, you don't wanna be like, capoed and not in tune. So you do need to maybe touch up for a song, but I try not to do any extreme tuning with the capo on, on an electric, because if I have to do the next song on the same guitar and I have to pull it off, it's not gonna be ready. And sometimes I'll know like, okay, the next song starts the piano. I've got a whole verse to tune. Okay, I can tune really specific to the capo. Does that make sense? Okay, we can go more into detail, but this is something I really rely on live. So I bring like three, four of these on a, on a weekend trip to make sure I got what I need for multiple guitars. Uh, you know, the acoustic, if I use it on acoustic, it's, it's tightened down way more. Um, so yeah, that's something I really rely on live. Uh, obviously you gotta bring picks. Uh, I always bring extra strings. I talked about that in the other video, but for me lately, that's these. 11s for the Les Paul and the Fano and the 10 and a halfs for my uh, Tele. Those have been great for me, love these. Um, been using these for decades. Love those. Um, let's see what else I bring. Yeah, I think that's kind of the main things that I would take on a trip. You know, it's guitar, pedal board, extra cables. Yeah, you may want to bring, always bring an extra guitar cable because you just never know when one's going to die 
and sometimes I'll just have it with me like next to my pedal board or back by my amp and if something goes wrong I can rely on that as a quick you know quick like fix you know um, so yeah there's the kind of the main uh, setup for stuff please uh, below ask you know ask me if, the, if I if I left something out if there's something else you'd want to know about like uh, a tour date or what I would bring um, for fly dates when we fly somewhere I can only bring that those guitar two guitars and a pedal board and then when we get there the amps are you know whatever's been provided by the rental company that we've uh, uh, so I have to get there and I like I said I always you know we, you can go back and reference the matchless video about the, how I dial up an amp but I try to go as you know just get a great sound out of both amps whatever they are just get them to where they sound the best and sometimes you got to be really quick about that and then I rely on the pedals during the concert to do everything else uh, and one, oh yeah, one quick note about um, dialing in your tone. If it's an unfamiliar place, or even if it is your amps, um, you know, I'll get a good sound standing back by the amp, but really what matters is my ears, right? So like if, you, if you're using in-ear monitors, or if you're using wedges, um, you want to make sure that, that the sound is good in there, right? That's, what, that's where you want your sound to sound good. So like what, what I'll do is I'll just make sure uh, that sounds good in my ears because that's really what you know the microphone if you think about it the microphone on the cab that's going to be it will be perceiving that tone differently than if you're standing up above the amp playing right so like what matters and what you're going to hear out front in the mix is what the microphone hears so that is closer to what you're going to have in your in your mix if you're using ears so what i'll do is i'll mic them up, I'll get as good a sound as I can, but then I adjust my tone based on what's coming into my in-ears, not what I'm hearing back by the amps. So once I plug in and I've got my, my ears plugged in, my monitors, you know, if it sounds dull, then I brighten it up, or I brighten it up at the amp, or I brighten it up at the guitar. And if it sounds too bright, I go back and I move the mic a little, you know, take it further away from the cone. I'll pull a little tone back off of my overdrive pedals. You know, it's all just kind of common sense stuff. Just like, what does it sound like in my ears? If it doesn't sound right, don't be like, well, it sounds good standing by the amp. You got to go back and, you know, rethink it. If, it's does, if it doesn't sound right in the ears, something's wrong. Um, so, yeah, I'm really meticulous about that stuff live. I go back there, make sure my mics are right where I want them. Even if someone else has mic'd it up, that's tricky. If it's, if it's a situation where you need to let them do their job, let them mic it up. But if you, if you have trust, if you have a relationship, or if you are the only one micing it, mic it how you want. Um, so yeah, man, I hope that helps. That's just some stuff, not a lot of playing here. We've got this whole stereo rig set up here that uh, hopefully on the next video, I'm gonna show you kind of what that looks like and how I use that live, because uh, that could be really fun to dive into. Uh, so like I said, please ask questions below if you want. I love uh, answering questions on there. And thanks so much for watching, this is so cool. I really, really enjoy uh, doing these and love uh, connecting with you guys. So thank you for watching, thanks for uh, I value your time and I think that's really cool that you guys are it's been fun to like see a lot of the same names popping up here and uh, getting to know you guys a little bit so thanks so much and uh, hopefully we will see you uh, in the next video and uh, I don't know what we'll be talking about maybe stereo guitars if I can figure it out all right thanks guys